Hello everyone, Kirith here. And have you ever thought that your chair at home just isn't quite doing it for you? Is it a really battered plastic or wooden chair with a wobbly leg and the back doesn't move and you come out of it and you're really aching and you're in it and you're aching? Because that's where I was. And I was like that for years. I had a really cheap and tacky chair at home that I'd use when I was doing spreadsheets, all that boring stuff and editing. And I'd come out of it and my back would kill. So recently I just decided I need to get on top of this. So I went out and I bought a gaming chair. That's not this one. <laughs> So I bought a Corsair T1 gaming chair and at the same time GT Omega reached out to me and they said hey do you want a gaming chair to go with your sim rig which they provided to me. So GT Omega sent this chair to me for free, it's very important that you know that but it's very useful because I can compare this against the Corsair T1 and let you know what features are better in this chair, let you know what features might be missing from this one, might be missing from gaming chairs generally. And basically, if you're looking to upgrade your chair at home, I really hope this is going to be a useful video for you as I talk about some of the features that you find in these chairs that you don't have in kind of basic chairs. So I'm going to cover four broad areas in this video. I'm going to talk about comfort. I'm going to talk about build quality materials. I'm going to talk about adjustability. And I'm going to talk about how hard it is to build. Those are the important areas for me. I'm not a chair expert, by the way. I do sim racing on this channel. I spend a lot of time in my rig and I spend a lot of time editing, which I now spend in this chair, but I'm not a chairologist, whatever the word is. So just an ordinary guy letting you know what I think in case you happen to be in the position that I was a few months ago thinking, hey, I should be upgrading my chair, but I have no idea what to look out for. So okay, here we go. This is a GT Omega Elements chair and it firstly strikes you, right, as not looking like a gaming chair. This chair is a bit weird. It kind of doesn't scream gaming and the Corsair T1 screams gaming. A lot of the other chairs absolutely scream gaming and that really has some effects when it comes to comfort. So this chair, because it doesn't scream gaming, I believe, is not as aggressively bucketed as other gaming chairs. Other gaming chairs will really flare up here in the seat. They really arch out these wings and when you get in them, they really hug your curves. They compress you in and you feel like, right, okay, I'm, I'm in this space, I'm locked in, I better be doing something intensive. This chair is not like that. It has a much more restrained and therefore I find a lot more of a relaxed seating position. Now that's going to be personal preference for you. If you really want a kind of game re-aesthetic, this chair doesn't have it. However, if you want an aesthetic that you feel is a bit more restrained, doesn't look out of place in the office, this chair is going to be better for that. So there's a point of personal preference on styling, but on the fit, it really is going to affect it. Now, I think for the bucketing for me, I much prefer this seat, this kind of seat style here. When you have really aggressive bucketing in a gaming seat, for me, it's just a bit too intense. And, you know, I've been in race cars and the bucketing makes sense because you've got G-forces and you want to be compressed in. But I find the bucketing in, in gaming chairs a little bit unusual. So I'm all for this kind of more restrained style. Now, there is one area where I think, and this is a really, really, really important area for gaming chairs generally. And it's an area where I think the GT Omega Elements chair does it a little bit unusually. And that's lumbar support. So the biggest difference, in my opinion, I'm not an expert, from going from just like a wooden chair to a chair like this is lumbar support. This is a game changer, genuinely. If you've never sat in one of these gaming slash office chairs, please, please, please go around to a mate's house when you're in a shop and you see one just sitting there at a convention, whatever, because unless you've tried this, you don't know what you're missing. I didn't know what I was missing. I don't think I can go back now to not having lumbar support in my office chair, genuinely. Um, and I actually feel like I've probably damaged my back for the years and years I've spent without having lumbar support. And I'm hopeful that now choosing chairs that have lumbar support, whether it's a GT Omega or all the Corsair T1 or other gaming chairs, now my back is gonna be fully supported and that's gonna help me later on in my life, hopefully. But the GT Omega chair does it a bit weirdly. So lumbar support pillows sit suspended. Um, that's where they should be to support your spine, I find. And what normally happens in gaming chairs where you have that very gamery style is you have eyelets up here. So you have all the, the bucketing, you have the eyelets here, and that allows straps to go through, go through the eyelets, comes through the bottom of the uh, top part of the seat here, hooks through the lumbar support pillow and suspends it in place. Now the GT Omega, uh, elements chair doesn't have eyelets I think probably because of the styling and because of that there's nothing to hook into for the lumbar support pillow so the lumbar support pillow when you're not sat in it will sit here and when you go and sit in the chair what you have to do is you have to lean behind you just lift it up 
and then once you sit back it's locked in place and once you sit back this is an absolutely fantastic lumbar support pillow it's much bigger than other lumbar support pillows i've seen i love the way it's indented here this really might be my spine but it really kind of hugs my back and that's where i want to be supported i don't want to be supported really around my hips and my thighs i want to be supported around the curvature of my spine somewhat kind of sagging and drooping but because it doesn't have that um straps going through it you have to lift it up the first time every time you get in the chair so just bear that in mind i might be doing this wrong but that's the way that i the only way i can see of doing it so the pillow itself is great the support is great but bear in mind there is an unusual way that it actually works in the gt mega element series chair obviously there's an export pillow that's very common in gaming chairs i think i've got this the wrong way around whoops it's a very nice pillow you can see the way it comes out i don't really care too much about neck support pillows because i only make contact with them when i'm leaning back when i'm relaxing or frustrated whatever think about whenever you might lean back in a chair like that but the quality is appreciated because this, these pillows always touch your hair the back of your hair on, on your neck and kind of this area here which is very sensitive when you have a, a neck support pillow that has really bad materials you almost don't want to touch it whereas this one is very nice so the quality of these pillows absolutely fantastic but um, the lump spot pillow is a little bit unusual but let's actually talk about the quality of the materials themselves so now you probably noticed when you saw this chair you're like hang on it's not very gamery there's no like weird colors going on or accents or whatnot and uh fine okay so it's your choice it's choice what you probably can't tell on video is that and i'm not saying this because gt omega provided me with this chair this is compared to every other gaming chair that i've been in these are the best materials i've ever, I've ever sat in now i don't know what it is i think it might be because they're not having to chop it up with like colored accents and therefore you have more stitching and more slack and more looseness because you've got these big cuts of material it just feels so premium when you take it out of the box you're like okay this is a nice product it wouldn't look out of place in a nice audi or bmw mercedes i don't think this is going to come across in the video i think you kind of need to see one in person so you can take my word for it or not but these materials are just such such, such high quality than other gaming chairs I've been in. Certainly much higher quality than the Corsair T1, which feels very, very, very plasticky. And I think that's because it has these colored elements and the colored elements you can see are very fake and plasticky because this is, is the big cuts. It kind of looks like a normal chair and it feels really, really nice with the perforation. So I'm putting some B-roll in this video so you can see closer up, but this is a really, really nice finish. You may need to see it to believe. Let's move on to the armrests, which are my pet hate in gaming chairs and the gt mega series element series chair doesn't get it perfect either i hate how armrests in gaming chairs and office chairs rattle i just hate it and the reason why they rattle is because i have all these things that you can move them and it's like 4d and they slot in every dimension into like through time and space it's like interstellar i don't want that i, I want it to be solid because when you're resting on it, I don't want anything to wobble around. I'd like to be solid. I'd rather they were adjustable through the bolts at the bottom and you could adjust it that way in those dimensions. But anyway, this is better than some other gaming chairs. It's better than the Corsair T150, which has an abhorrent kind of fake carbon fibre finish that just looks so bad and feels so bad. I've had other products with fake carbon fibre finishes before. It never ever feels good to me. I, I don't know why. So... Anyway, this doesn't have it. It's a plain plastic thing, but I don't see it because, and I don't know if this is standard, but they provided me with these things in the box, which are like um, armchair covers and armrest covers, and they're absolutely fantastic. So definitely look into getting these armrest covers um, in any kind of gaming chair I think you get, because often the material on the armrests themselves aren't great. They're quite plasticky. And because these are elasticated so tight, it raises it up, which is great for me. You actually get less of a wobble because you're kind of compressing into the thing. So these solve a lot of the issues for me, but um, the armrests themselves are nothing to shout, shout home about. I don't think anyone's cracked yet how to get armrests that um, don't wobble, unfortunately. Right, so there we go. Those are the armrests. We've done the, the material. We've done the kind of bucketing. Talked about just the quality of the cuts here. And um, I think that's going to be it for comfort and build quality and materials actually no let's bring it all together because i need to get in the chair the piece de resistance of this chair i think is when you sit in it for the first time so i'm going to show you now so here i am sitting in the chair and every time you get in this chair it is just so nice it is nice i want to be in this chair unlike my old chair which i wanted to get out of 
this chair I want to be in. And this is not going to translate in a video, but again, if you see gaming slash office chairs in retail shops or just one of your friends has them, just sit in it and just try it out. Because honestly, where I came from, it's like this is like living in the year 3000. Now, the what the GT Mega Element series does better than the Corsair T150 and other gaming chairs I've been in. This is the sturdiest and solidest gaming chair I've ever been in. It's unbelievably solid. And I don't understand how they've done that because every gaming chair is built the same way. You have the kind of spider wheel that you put the caster wheels on. You then take the gas powered lifter and you um, you bolt that into the, the base seat here. And then you slot the back, this bit, onto the base seat and you bolt it in with two bolts on either side. And then you drop all of that through each other so it all kind of sits onto the spider wheel. They're all built the same way. But I don't understand how this one is just so sturdy. Um, I've no idea. So the irony is that even though it's, it's got less bucketing, I'm not, bucket, I'm not compressed in, it's actually way more sturdy than like a really bucketed gaming chair that has a lot of looseness in it. So there's just no looseness in this. And I don't know why that is. I'm looking here. I mean... So I've got a GT Omega uh, racing rig that has never let me down. Um, it's a great piece of equipment. They provided me with this Allen key for that. And also with this one, it comes with this Allen key. So I'm guessing every GT Omega product that has bolts with Allen key, hex um, uh, bolts, comes with Allen key. This Allen key is incredible. It has a 3D head on it. I have my own Allen keys, like loads of them around the place and really long ones, stuff like that. I love these Allen keys. So the fact they're thinking, because the 3D bolt means that you can get it at weird angles when you're between the short and the long end, you can get it in there, you can always get the purchase. So the fact they're thinking about that with this Allen key, that it will be more expensive than just providing a standard Allen key, shows that I think maybe they're just using better quality materials and really thinking about it. So I don't know, I'm speculating, but you know this is a premium allen key that they provide with it and it's a really solid chair so i don't know why it is it's very solid you won't be able to tell from this video you can't just sit in one but that's my view on it right let's talk about adjustability so like every other man in the united kingdom i'm six foot tall <laughs> and this chair out of the box at its highest setting is a little bit higher than other gaming chairs i've been in which i like i hate getting into a chair when you built it you sit down you're like hang on i feel quite low down so this chair is, is high at its highest setting. It's a bit higher at its highest setting. And you can always bring it down. So you've got a little bit to work with. I don't know if that's because it's a bit thicker or something, but I like the fact that at its highest, it's higher up. You can obviously adjust it through the um, gas powered lift here. You can also obviously move it back and forwards. None of that is particularly groundbreaking. Um, so the adjustability is good. There's some locking arms here that I don't fully understand, but there's some ways you can lock them. Uh, the seat, um, but yeah, just basically good. There's one thing that they do extra that is really cool if you're into sim racing, and that is lockable caster wheels. Again, I don't know if these are standard, but these came in my box. You can lock these caster wheels, and that means that if you're doing something where you're sim racing and you're pressing against pedals, this chair ain't going to move because it's a heavy chair. So that's absolutely fantastic. So if you've got a wheel stand or you've got your wheel clamped to a desk, it's going to be great. And if you want to be in a locked position as well, you can just lock these cars towards and you'd be locked. So that is a great touch. And um, I appreciate it if these were extras. I don't know if they were or not, but definitely something to look out for. Right, so we talked about comfort. We talked about build quality materials. We talked about adjustability. Let's talk about how it was to build. And it was absolutely fine. There were no dramas. It wasn't any easier to build than the gaming chairs. It wasn't any harder comes with instructions I'm, I'm going to gamble are these the instructions yes they are so these are the instructions they're nice and big at least it's not a pdf like other ones i get you kind of i find when you're building something it is paper but i like having paper instructions that you can look at um these are pretty good they're not revolutionary i'm not sure you can revolutionize them they're not bad either so yeah tick tick comes with an actual printed assembly guide and um, it wasn't that difficult to build so we've gone through all the things i'll summarize it now i think more importantly about how good this specific chair for this video between me and you viewer more importantly about how good this gt uh, mega elements chair is if you're watching this in a chair that is not a office or gaming chair and you think you can afford an office or gaming chair and you spend 
a meaningful amount of time in that chair, I 100% recommend you look further into this and ultimately just try and sit in some chairs. Because until I sat in chairs with lumbar support, I'd never appreciated it. So more important than this chair, please, please, please go check it out because I'm sure your back will thank you later on. I hope my back's gonna thank me later on, pay it forward. Now coming back to the Elements chair, I mean, it's a great chair. So I can't knock it. I'm sure that's why they wanted to send it to me because they knew it's a great chair and they knew that I'd probably be happy with it. They're not gonna send me a bad chair. It's so sturdy. It's a little bit taller than other chairs, which I love. The quality of the materials is fantastic. Only bits I can knock is I wish the armrest didn't have any wobble. That would be fantastic. And I wish the lumbar support pillow could be fixed in a um, suspended position. So there's something they could possibly do there. Maybe something, a, a light Velcro, maybe a bit more elegant. That just Because once you're compressed against it, it's absolutely fine. It's not going anywhere. I've got all the support I need and it feels great. And I feel like I could be sat at my battle station battling with Excel documents for just hours and hours and hours now. Um, but that's something that I think is, is, is still to be perfected. It's not perfected in this chair. Otherwise, I don't really have any complaints. I'm thinking about whether I give it an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. I don't think it really matters. Um, we'll give it we'll give it an 8 out of 10 because I feel like if the lumbar support pillow had some kind of attachment to the back, that would be 9 out of 10. And the 10 out of 10 chair has got to be massaging me. It's got to be, you know, proofreading my emails. It's got to be ordering food for me or something like that. It's got to have a chilled drink dispenser in there. Um, it's got to be um, all RGB, it's got to have speakers in it, it's got to do everything to be 10 out of 10. So maybe one day on the channel we'll get a 10 out of 10 chair. So I'm going to give this one 8 out of 10. We'll do another review for the Corsair T1. If you've got any comments on this video, by the way, let me know if you think there's anything I should be adding to these reviews. Um, again, it's I, they haven't paid me to do this, they don't know I'm talking about it, but I did get it for free. It's very, very, very important that you know that. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, please do smash that like and subscribe button. You're the only people that are able to grow this channel, it's not me. So I'm so grateful for anyone that is supporting the channel. And yeah, there we go. That's my review of the GTM Mega Elements chair.